All right, let's take a look. So question number one. So what I'm working on right now, this, there's two chapter 10 quizzes. I don't know if you noticed. Um, so this is the quiz. We still have to do 10-4, which we will do tonight. We're going to do, we have three things tonight. We have two quizzes for chapter 10. I made a second quiz and uh, no extra charge. I promise it's included in the course fee. Two quizzes for, no need to thank me either. It's okay. All right, so I'm just joking. Anyway, I'm kind of half joking. It's funny that education is one of the few areas where you really want kind of sometimes less for your money, huh? Not everybody. There's that in the gym, right? People pay for the gym and then they don't go, right? It's a little, little bit kind of the same thing, right? All right, but I'm going to give you more. So there's two chapter 10 quizzes, which we'll do tonight, and 10.4. That's our plan. So what was chapter 10 about? Two sample stuff, right? So this is the quiz for chapter 10, but it's the one specifically that says confidence intervals. So, so there's, there's two of them. So this is the confidence interval one. Quiz for chapter 10, confidence intervals. All right, so this, this is by far more important than those other two things. I wanted to start off with the most important thing. 10.4 will be somewhat, well, the other two will have some value, but this especially has value. A lot of these will show up directly on the exam. When is our exam? Do you notice I updated the calendar online, right? It, um, it is right before Thanksgiving. It now says what's true, right? When you first come into the class, you know, I fixed the calendar so it says what's true. The 27th, the day before Thanksgiving, is our fourth exam. So, all right, let's dive in. Construct, uh, blah, 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 blah. Here we go. Researcher was interested in comparing the amount of time spent watching television by women and by men. Who watches more television? Men, men do. I sure think men do, huh? That would certainly be my guess. Independent, simple, random samples of 14 women and 17 men were selected, and each person was asked how many hours he or she had watched television during the previous week. Here's the summary stats. So for the women... Um, the average was 12.6 hours. See, see the X bar there? Average number. That's kind of small. Make it, I could make it bigger, but whatever. Um, the, um, and there's some standard deviation, right? Not, not every woman was completely average. Some were above, some were below. And that was 14 women. For the men, the average was 14 hours. That looks higher, doesn't it? 14 hours is a higher average than 12.6. 5.2 standard deviation. So that was 17 men. Construct a 99% confidence interval. Okay, we haven't done that yet. So what we've done so far in Chapter 10 is only hypothesis tests. I don't know if you've noticed that. It was all about hypothesis tests. Well, now we want to do all those same things for confidence intervals. Okay, so if you... And guess where we're going to go on our calculator? Can you, can you find it? We're going to go to Stats and Tests. Like usual, I bet you can guess. Think about, you want it to end with interval, I-N-T, right? Go to stats, go to tests, um, or stat and test, whatever it says. Anyway, and now, now is this one, it's always the big question, is, is this percentages or averages? Percentages or means? Is there any percentages here? No. no, so it's averages, isn't it? It's means. They're saying the average number of hours um, uh, men watch television per week, and the average number for women, or I mean women and then men. Anyway, right? So we're, we're not going to do a prop. It's not a proportion test, is it? It's not a proportion. So what's it going to be? And it's, and it's two samples, isn't it? That's what, that's what chapter 10 is all about. Now we're doing two samples on all the questions, not just one. That's been the new, the new thing about chapter 10. It's all been about two samples. It's not a two, it's not a two prop. It's not proportions. So what's it going to be? Two sample T interval. There it is. Two sample T interval. So go to two sample T interval. Way down to A, two sample T interval. And then right away it asks you data or stats. Which one do we have on this problem? Do we have a list of data? No, no, we have stats. So select stats, hit enter. And then it'll ask you um, X1 bar, S1, and N1. And then the same thing for the other three. You can see them right there, right? It even says X1 bar, 
<coughs> excuse me, S1 and N1, and then X2 bar, S2 and N2. It's telling you if you can read those. Are those too small? Mm -hmm. It's telling you exactly what they are. So I'll write them bigger here. 12.6, 3.9, and 14, and then the other ones are 14.0, 5.2, and 17. So put those into your calculator. And then it asks you sea level. What they what did they want on this one? Ninety nine? I don't I don't know where you guys are saying. Oh there it is, yeah. Ninety nine. Point ninety nine. Confidence level. And then now pooled we always say no. no. Our data is not we're not lumping the two together into one big pool, never. So we just say no and then calculate. And takes you a second. I'm getting minus I'm getting this one, aren't I? Yeah, that very first Answer. Did you all get that? Minus 5.91. If you round to two places, comma 3.11 rounded to two places. Is that good? Is that coming out? Um, so we got that one. Is that all there is for that question? Yeah, that's it. That's it for that question. We good? Any other questions on that one? Hey, what did that mean, by the way? Did that mean that there was strong evidence the women, men, who watches TV more? Well, notice that the con it's kind of a funny thing, and I'll just hint at it now. We'll talk about it thoroughly in about probably 10 minutes. But this right here, notice it goes from a negative to a positive, which means it includes zero, doesn't it? And, and what is it a confidence interval for? It's a confidence interval for the difference. Remember, all, remember in this chapter... What it's all about is two populations, and we're subtracting them. So we're taking mu1 minus mu2. What are they? That's the women average minus the men average. We're taking the women average minus the men average, and we're saying the difference might be zero. See how, the, see how zero is a possibility in that interval? Right? Think about that with me for just a second. If I subtract two things, what if I take my age... And I subtract Zach's age. I'm 52. I bet Zach isn't. <laughs> so if I subtract those two, do you, am I going to get a positive number or a negative number? Positive, positive right? Going to get a positive answer. So whenever you subtract two things in the bigger numbers first, this is what we're going to be into. So think with me on this. This isn't just side talk. This is going to the main and probably one of the most difficult points on this next chapter is what happens when they swap those and what that means. So think, think these thoughts with me, right? If you subtract two numbers and the bigger numbers first, the subtraction comes out positive, right? Of course you know that. And if you subtract two numbers and, and you go like 10 minus 50, Zach's not 10. Um, we'll just, I'll just pick a, a number, uh, 28, there we go, minus 52. That's going to come out some kind of negative whatever, isn't it? So when the bigger number's in the back, when the bigger's in the back, the, the, the subtraction comes out negative, of course. And when the bigger's in the front, the subtraction comes out positive, of course, doesn't it? Okay, well, what if you subtract two things and it comes out zero? What if I was to say I subtracted two numbers and the answer came out zero? How can you subtract two numbers and the difference is zero? They gotta be the same number. Like they're both seven, they're both eight, they're both twenty-three. They gotta be the same number if you subtract them and get zero, huh? So, okay, what's my point in all that talk? Well, that's what we're doing with a confidence. So this right here is women minus men. We're saying it's the difference. So the women average, the average amount of hours women watch TV, minus the average amount of hours men watch TV. We're subtracting those, and we're saying that the difference is somewhere between negative 5 and positive 3. If you're between negative 5 and positive 3, you might be 0, huh? Negative 5 and positive 3, 0 is, between that, is in that zone, isn't it? So we're saying the difference between women and men might be 0, which means the number of hours on average men and women watch TV might be the same. Do you see that? 
If, the, if two things have a zero difference, they're not different. They're the same, aren't they? So this interval here actually, this 99% confidence interval, actually makes us think it might be the same thing. No, it's not the same as Terry. Look right there. Those are different. Well, yeah, that was our sample of 14 men or women and 17 men. That could have been luck, right? Remember, that's always the issue in stats. How do we know that wasn't just like, how do we know men and women aren't really the same and we just happen to get a group of uh, women that watch less TV and men that watch more by random sample luck? Couldn't that happen? It could. And in fact, we think that might have happened because our confidence interval includes zero, which means they might be the same. All right, let's move on. They're not asking us about all that right now. They will in just a minute. So I just wanted to kind of put that thought in the waters of your mind, let it sink a little bit, and we'll go straight on with it in about 5-10 minutes. One of these questions will hit it straight on. So just be thinking that way. That's what that confidence interval means. It's telling you about the difference between the two groups, women and men, on their average hours watching TV. All right, next one. A researcher was interested in comparing salaries of female and male employees at a particular company. Independent random samples of eight female employees and 15 male employees yielded the following weekly salaries. So they have a bunch of numbers there. Um, and then they want us to make a 95% confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2. The difference, see, while well, we're doing the difference between the mean weekly salaries of females and males. All right, so what do you think we're going to do when we got a whole big list of numbers? Put it, and where are we going to put it? L1, L2, right? We're going to throw all those numbers into L1 and L2. Now, I don't know if you can even see those numbers. Can you see those numbers? So, um, yeah, I don't really want to rewrite them. So you can look at your example if you want, if you're on to number two, um, or if you can see mine. I unfortunately can't make it bigger because I'll have to stop my little iPad thing and it'll choke. So, no more of those days, whatever size we're stuck with. Uh, let's go find the exam for notes. Where is this thing on the exam for notes? So, let me see. Two proportions. No, these are not proportions, are they? Um, it's two independent means. That's it. We're talking about two independent groups, right? A group of men, a group of women. And, um, and they're not matched in pairs. Remember how we did that last time where they were matched up? We're going to talk more about that tonight. Use two-sample t-test or two-sample t-interval. We're doing t-interval. It's a confidence interval. So uh, put them in. If, if two independent lists of data are given, that's us, huh? Two in, see, I'm using the exam four notes. I'm under number two. Two independent lists of data. Put them in L1 and L2 and select data. All right. Let's go back to it. So put them in L1 and L2. Now we go to two sample T interval, two sample T interval, and we select data. And um, let's see where are we at. Two sample, two sample T. That's uh, what is it? It's zero option zero. Sample T interval. Okay, then choose data. And then what you get when you do that is it says list one, list two, and it's already got L1 and L2. We've done this one like this before, huh? And that's great. That's exactly what we want. The frequencies are both one. We always, we always leave those as one. Frequency one. Frequency. They're both one. And then confidence level. This one's a 98 percenter. 0.98. And the pooled is always no, and calculate. And I'm getting negative 381.7 comma 158.32. At least if you did my particular one, if you could see all those little tiny numbers. That's what you should get, and that's, that's all we need to do. Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they want, they want to round, so the negative 382, and this would be 158. Yeah, there, oh, there it is. It's the top answer again, huh? There it is. Is that good? Are we good on that? 
questions on that? So that that's it for that one. Yeah, that's it for that one. All is well. So nothing too new, huh? It's just it's very much like like what we did last time with the hypothesis test. We're just doing confidence intervals. Same thing. The trick will come when we interpret them. So let's keep moving. We're going to get to the good stuff here. So question three. A researcher, um, yeah, so here we go. So here's, so if I've been doing the Charlie Brown teacher voice, dial in with me now. This is important. This is what, what uh, people want to uh, have trouble with on the test. So let me help you with this. So a researcher was interested in comparing the amount of time spent watching television. Women and men, here we go. Same kind of thing again. Here's the data. And then they're just jumping us to the answer. It's like they're already giving us the answer. There it is. We just did that one, didn't we? So they're saying the answer is minus 5.73, mu1 minus mu2. It's between that and 4.13. So they already did the answer. That's women minus men. Because over here, women is mu1, men is mu2. Right? They always just make the one, the first one mu1, the second one mu2. There's no exception. They always do it that way. So they're saying the difference, the subtraction, women minus men is somewhere between negative 5.7 and positive 4.13. So this is women minus men. Women minus men. It's somewhere between negative 5.73 and four point positive 4.13. What does the confidence interval suggest about the population means? What is it saying to us? Let's go to this screen here. Can you see all those? Yeah. Where we have all those on the screen. And so let me write it again. So negative 5.73 mu1 minus mu2 positive 4.13. Now what does that mean? So let's take a look at our exam notes. Exam four. There it is. I'm on number four. Meaning of a confidence interval. Both negative. All negative. Both positive. All positive. One negative, one positive. Some negative, some positive. See the three different cases? So let me first just direct you this way, and then I'll bring logic in later. So which case is our case on this problem? Do we have two negatives, two positives, or a negative and a positive? Negative. Yeah, we have the mix. We have one negative, one positive, don't we? So we're here on case C. So what does that mean? That means zero is, a big bold is there, is included, which implies that mu1 might, mu1 minus might, mu1 minus mu2 might equal zero. Thus, mu1 might equal mu2. So, we have no confidence that mu1 and mu2 are different. They might be the same. So, that's going to the logic. What, why? Why is that the case? Let's go back. So, so first off, can we, an can we answer that question? Let's go back. Where were we? There we are. So, on this question, we're saying that we're going from a negative number to a positive number. If you, if you think about a number line, if you go from negative 5.73 to positive 4 point whatever, right? If you're going in that, if that's your, con, your, your what, 99%? Yeah, no, you're 99% you're confidence interval. You're 99% confident that the difference, women minus men, is somewhere between negative 5.73 and positive 4.13 which means zero is somewhere in that interval, isn't it? So zero could be in your interval. And what does that mean if you subtract two things and the difference is zero? Yeah, if you, the only way you can subtract two things and get an answer of zero is if those two things are the same, huh? So that means... Mu1 might, now why am I just saying might? Well, because we don't know exactly, we're just 99% sure that the difference is somewhere in that interval. We don't know exactly where. So, but zero is a possibility, which means mu1 might equal mu2. They might be the same. The women average television watching might be the same as the men, like we said earlier. And that's what your notes are telling you, right? The exam four notes, they're saying... So we have no confidence that they're different. They might be the same. 
That makes sense? See how a confidence interval can communicate to you the same kind of thing a hypothesis test does? That's what we're interested in in this problem. Is they're wanting us to more deeply understand now confidence intervals and hypothesis tests and how they fit together. How they're like saying one and uno. They're saying the same number in different languages. They're saying the same truth in different formats. A confidence interval tells us about whether the women is higher, the men is higher, or they might be the same. And in this case, they might be the same, is what the confidence interval is saying to us, because zero is in that interval. And if zero is in the interval, the difference might be zero. They might not be different at all. They might be the same. Let's go back and answer that then. So let's go through it. Is it the first answer? Let's read through them. These are big old paragraph answers. The confidence interval limits include zero. Is that true? Yeah. So it's one of those first two. How about the third one? The confidence interval includes only negative. No way. The confidence interval includes only positive. No way. So cross out the only negative, only positive. It's one of these includes zero, right? The limits from negative to positive. Zero is between negative and positive. So whenever you go from negative to positive, you're including zero. So it's one of those two. Which one? Let's go. Let's read on. Which suggests that the two population means are unlikely to be equal. Mm -mm, no, we said they might be equal. Eh, on that, which suggests that the two population means might be equal. Yeah, that's it. There does not appear to be a significant difference between the mean amount of time spent watching TV for women and the mean amount of time for men. True. That is what the confidence interval is telling us. Because it said that zero is a possibility, then if the difference is zero, they're not different. It's saying they might be equal. Is that good? That's not too bad, is it? Feel like you could do that on the test? A couple weeks. All right. Well, anything I can clarify on that? Want to move on? They'll give the, we'll have two more of these just like it. And here they come. Here's the next one. So, um, paint manufacturer is um, made a modification to a paint to speed up its drying time. So they put chemicals in there to speed up the drying time. It, um, 11 cans of type A and 9 cans of type B, the modified paint, were selected and applied to similar surfaces. <coughs> the drying times in hours were recorded. The summary stats are as follows. So here's the type A, here's the type B. The 98% confidence interval was obtained from U1 minus U2. The difference between the mean drying time for paint, paint cans of type A and the mean drying time for paint cans of type B. And there's the, there it is. So 4.90 mu1 minus mu2 and 17.50. So that's really A minus B, mu1, mu2, whatever you want to call them. So they're subtracting. The averages for can A minus can B. It's like women minus men, but now it's type A minus type B. And they got, what did they get? Are they both positive, both negative, or one negative, one positive? Both positive. Both positive. So think with me what that means. If you're, they're telling us that the confidence interval, the difference goes from four point positive 4.90 to positive 17.50, that's the region of the, what is it, 98% confidence interval. So where's zero? Is zero in that interval or not in that interval? Yeah, zero's over here somewhere. Zero comes before positive numbers, right? Positive numbers are off to the right on the number line. Zero is not in that interval. So we are 98% sure that their difference is not zero, which means they're different. The data is saying they are not the same. The drawing time for A and B is different. Now, which one is it saying better? This is Remember, this is A minus B. Remember what I was talking to you about? If, I, if you subtract two, if you put the bigger number first, the answer comes out positive, right? Let me do a different number there. If you put the bigger number first, the difference is positive. If you put the bigger number in the back, the difference is negative, huh? Right? If you subtract two numbers and the bigger one's in the front, it's positive. If the bigger one's in the back, it's negative. So we're getting a difference that is for sure positive, right? It's in the positive zone, 
We're 98% sure. We're not 100%. There could be crazy luck. But we're pretty sure. We're 98% sure that the difference, the subtraction, is some positive number between positive 4.9 and positive 17.50. So if the difference is positive, if you subtract two things and you get a positive answer, was the bigger number in the front or the back? Front. So A is the bigger, is what we're saying, huh? Do you see that? That's the, the confidence interval is talking to us. Do you speak his language? Are you starting to speak his language? He's saying to us in his strange language, when both these numbers are positive, the difference is positive. And if you subtract two things and get positive, that means the one in the front was bigger. The first number was bigger. If you subtract two things and get positive, that means the A is a bigger time. That means type A takes longer to dry. More time. And A is the original kind. B is the special chemical modified paint. So B must be smaller. So the B is smaller, the A is smaller time, the A is bigger. Is that good? Is that what we wanted? Exactly. We wanted B to make the paint dry quicker. That was the chemical additive to make the paint dry quicker in B. Looks like it's working. At least there's strong statistical evidence that it's working. Do you see how the confidence field is saying the same kind of thing a hypothesis would tell us? How are we doing? Am I losing you? Now that's all on, let's go and see it on the notes. It's all here on the notes. Let me erase the previous. So back to number four. So our interval, what was our interval? All negative, all positive, or a mix? All positive, which is a B, case B. And all positive, which means zero is not included, which is what we said. And impl it implies that the confidence interval, that the, that the second one is less, right? The one on the right is less. The one in the front is bigger. See, mu, mu one's bigger than mu two. See that there? The first one's bigger than the second one. A is bigger than B. That's what that means. Because if you subtract two things and get positive, the front number was bigger. There it is. So A is bigger, B is smaller. That's what the confidence interval is saying to us. Let's go back and say, okay. So let's see if we can come up with the right saying. A is bigger, B is smaller. Let's go for the words. Let's read them. First one. The confidence interval includes only positive. Is that true? Yeah. In fact, that's it, huh? We're done. Oh, no, 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 my mistake. The next one says positive. Oh, wait, no, no, we're really not done. I thought it was like the last one where they only had one positive, one negative, and a couple zeros. No such luck. We can get rid of this. We can get rid of this bottom one, right? This one's out. How about that? I want to cross something out. That one's out, right? Because that one says includes zero. No way. The interval does not include zero. So it's one of those top three. So we got to read on. Includes only positive. What else does it say? Which suggests that the two population means might be equal. No, no. Right? We're saying no, no, no. Um, where did we say? We're saying A is bigger, B is smaller. Right? A is bigger than B. Let's go back right here. A is bigger than B. Mu 1 bigger than mu 2. That's what it said on our notes. Right? So, no, that's wrong. Might be equal? No. There's not statistical evidence for that. How about, okay, what about the next part? Which suggests that the mean drying time for paint A is smaller than B? A smaller than B, is that right? No, A is the bigger one. So it's got to be this third one then. Suggests that the mean drying time for paint A is greater. There it is. There it is. A is greater than B. B is shorter, which means the chemicals, if you read on, uh, the modification seems to be effective in reducing drying times, yeah. The evidence points that way. How did you get the A was bigger? Yeah, I got that mainly. What's that? This is 4.9 hours, and then the B was 17.5? Um, <laughs> A was 4.5, and... and or, I'm sorry, no, that's, that's not the... Uh, that's the standard deviation. 76.3... Oh, um, yeah, well, that was, okay, careful. There's two things going on here. It's easy to get confused. These numbers, this right here and this right here, those are the subtraction. That isn't A and B. 
That's A minus B. Am I making any sense? So don't look at this number and go, oh, that's A, and this is B. No, not at all. Not at all. L look at what's in the middle here. Understand this. Let this factor into your thinking. That's the subtraction. So that's like me saying, hey, guys, I'm thinking of two numbers in my head. And I take the first number minus the second number, and the answer comes out positive. So if I subtract two numbers and we get a positive answer, which number was bigger? First number was bigger, right? If you subtract two things and get a positive answer, the first number was bigger. That's what's happening here. This is the subtraction, right? You see it? It's mu1. See the confidence interval? It even says mu1 minus mu2 right in the middle. It's the subtraction, A take away B, and it's coming out between two positive numbers. It must be positive. The subtraction is somewhere in positive zone. Right? The subtraction, we're 98% confident the subtraction is between 0.4 and 0.17, both positive. I mean, 4.9 and 17.5, both positive. So the subtraction is positive. The difference is positive. If you subtract two things and get a positive answer, that means the first one's bigger. That's what that means. And the notes tell you, you don't have to perfectly, logically always, I put it on the notes to help you out. Is that making sense there? So that's why we know that type A is greater because the difference was positive. Oh, so the 4.17, that's more like the answer to the subtraction. Is somewhere that's there. the answer to the subtraction, okay. exactly. That's what the difference means, yeah. The, and yeah, another good way to put it. The answer to the subtraction. That's what the phrase difference means, right? I go, if I say, what's the difference with 7 and 2? 5, right? The answer to the subtraction. That's what the phrase, the difference, means, right? So, so, right, everybody hearing what I'm saying? This right here and this right here are answers to the subtraction. Is that a more helpful phrase? They're the difference, right? So we know the answer is somewhere between 4.9 and 17.5. The answer to the subtraction is positive. So if the answer, when you subtract two things, is po somewhere in the positive zone, then that first number must have been bigger. A must be bigger. That's what the notes are telling us. If the answer when you subtract two things comes out positive, the first number was bigger. All right, so a lot of times, can I, can I give you a, a hint about learning math and science? Because I've taken a million math and science classes, and about half of the time, or maybe more, the teachers would say things like this, and I wouldn't understand it in class, but I, and, and, I, and therefore I would, uh, I would go home, and I would, and I would, Say it again, and I would do, look at the homework. I didn't even have YouTube. I couldn't play the teacher's words again, but I would write them down. I would write them down. I would go home, and I would look at the homework, and I would look at what the teacher had said in the notes, and I would say, if you subtract, and the answer's positive, the first one's bigger. And I'd go, huh? And I'd just work and work, but then usually, after a couple of weeks, these things would sink in. Just keep saying it to yourself as you look at the homework. Keep saying that phrase. And it'll eventually, it'll really click deep, more and more deeply. That's how, that's how these logical things work. You don't always get them right away. But hang on there. Stay on the horse if you feel bucked. Stay on the horse. You will eventually master it. It'll come. Our brains work that way. They, they, they digest things kind of slowly sometimes. Mine did. All right, let's try one more of these. A researcher was interested in comparing the heights of women in two different countries. So they got nine women from country A and nine women from country B. Uh, we're not going to do the data. They're just going to give us the answer right there. There's the confidence interval. Negative 4.34, um, mu1 minus mu2, and uh, negative 0 0.03. So that's, that's the answer. So these are the answers to the subtraction A minus B, huh? So again, those are answers to the subtraction. And they're telling us the answer is, is, is both negative, huh? So this is the other case. We've done one positive, one negative. We've done both positive. Now we've got both negative. So there, and then zero's over here, right? These num this, this world is, both of these are left of zero, aren't they? Zero's not in this interval. So what does it mean if you subtract two things and the answer comes out somewhere negative, somewhere 
between negative 4 and negative 0.03. So if I subtract, what does it mean? So if I take A minus B and the answer comes out negative, which number was bigger? The second is bigger, isn't it? The first was smaller, right? Smaller minus bigger makes negative answer, doesn't it? Like 2 minus 4 is negative 2, right? Smaller minus bigger. So that means B is the bigger, and A is the smaller, huh? Make sense? So on our exam two notes, I'll go there too. Our exam four, I keep saying two. Huh? Exam four notes. Um, so do we have both positive, both negative, or one positive, one negative? Both negative. Both negative. All negative zeros not included implies that mu1 is less than mu2, like we're saying, A is smaller than B. So you don't have to perfectly memorize this stuff. It'll, it'll tell you there. Where am I at? Right here. Yeah, so A is the smaller one. A is smaller than B. B is the bigger. Right? The first number is smaller if you subtract them and the answer is negative. The first one's got to be smaller. Okay, so let's go here. So this is negative to negative. We're saying A is smaller than B. That's what it means. That's what the confidence interval is telling us. Let's read through it. The confidence interval includes zero. No. The confidence interval includes only negative, yeah, only negative, yeah, only negative, yeah. All right, we got to read on, don't we? So, uh, which suggests that the mean height of women from country A is smaller than B. There it is. A is smaller than B. The other one's A is greater, no. Um, I don't, oh, M might be equal, no. There we go. So that's all of those. Is that okay? Questions on that? That's probably the hardest thing of the night, right there. The rest will be easier. We good there? So that's the main big idea I wanted to help you with, is what a confidence interval means. No other questions? That good? So you can just follow those exam four notes. They'll tell you. I'll tell you what it means. All right, on we go. Question six. Construct a confidence interval on this one. 99% confidence interval for the mean difference. Uh, the table shows the weights of nine subjects before and after a certain diet. So these people did a, a certain diet, and they're, they're giving us their weights before and after the diet. So we, and they want us to come up with a 99% confidence interval. All right, can you use your exam for notes real quick? All right, so I'll go there with you. Exam for notes. Okay, which kind is this? Is it, is it independent means? Well, first off, is it proportions or is it means? Were there percent? I don't think there was any percentages, were there? Yeah, so there's no, there's no percentages anywhere. It's for sure means. It's their average weight, right, before and after. So it's average weight. It's averages. It's means. It's not, it's not percentages. So, but, but remember, we have two different kinds of means. Remember the last two sections we did last night's homework? 10-2, was it, and 10-3? We had independent means, and then we have dependent matched pair means. Which one is this? Yeah, it's case three. It's matched pairs. It even says right there, before and after. It's giving you hints of when you know, married couples or male-female, actor-actress, before and after. Those are all kind of situations in which the, the people are paired up. The data is paired up. It's not just like two totally independent sets of data. It's matched pairs, exactly. So we come back here, right? Because these two numbers... It isn't like they just took um, whatever it is, four, five, six, or nine people um, at random for the before group and nine like totally different people for the after group, right? That's not the case. That, that would be two independent groups. But no, they took, this is the same person before and after. So those two numbers are matched up, aren't they? 
They're dependent on one another. They, they, they apply to the same person, etc. Right? So this is matched pair. These are all matched up. So this is matched pairs. And so what do you do then, according to the matched pairs on exam four notes? You, the data is matched pairs. So put the data in L1 and L2. And then that's when you have to do this whole thing where you do L1 minus L2 stored into L3, and, and then you use from there just simply t-test or t-interval, depending on whether you're doing a test or a you know, hypothesis test or confidence interval. Make sense? In fact, it's probably up here. No, it's not, huh? Did I get it? Yeah, that's it down there. Okay. So we good there. So that's what we need. So let's go to it. So we're talking about number three. All right, so these are matched pairs. Let me write it up there for you. So matched pairs. And we're going to put them in L1 and L2. So go ahead and... Throw that data into L1 and L2. After you put the data in L1 and L2, then go second, quit. You know the quit button's right above the mode key at the top? So go second, quit, quit out of that L1, L2. And then remember what you do from there. You go L1 minus L2 stored into L3 and hit enter. You did that in last night's homework, right? Mm -hmm. Remember how to get, how do we get L1? Mm -hmm. Second one and L2 is second two and L3 is second three. So then when you do that, when you go L1 minus L2 stored in L3, that puts into L3. You can even go back and look at it if you want to. All of a sudden in L3, it'll have the list. It will basically subtract these two, which would be six. Subtract these two, which would be two. Subtract these two, which would be... Something I don't know, 12, etc. It'll put, those are the differences. It'll put all those differences in L3 for you. It'll subtract L1 minus L2 and store it, store all the differences in L3. So it subtracts them all, the matched up pairs, and it stores them all in L3. And then from there, um, we either do T test. If we were testing, we're not testing, we want an interval. So we do T interval. No longer two sample. That's the part that confuses people sometimes, right? We're not doing two sample anymore because we're only focused on the one list, L3. So go to T interval at this point. And you all found the store button, right? Which is right above the on key on the left side. And then, um, then go to T interval. And choose data, because we're coming from data. And the list, what is the list? Where's our data stored now? L3. You got to change that to L3. Second, three, because that's where the differences are. They're stored in L3 now. And we want a what? 99% confidence interval? And calculate. I'm getting this one. Negative point six to twenty point four. Uh, let's move forward. Okay, so um, I don't know what number was number seven. Uh, so question number seven. Confidence interval for you know. So that's the same thing. I'm going to move on. We don't got time for this. We got to do other things. So this is the same thing. This is another one. Um, it's before and after again, right? So it's, it's going to be the, exactly like the last one. So I'm going to move on. Question eight. Uh, marketing survey. Product recognition. New York and California. Um, okay, so... Yeah, so this is this is our last question. Oh, and then there's a number nine. Um, yeah, okay, and then that's the last one, right? Yeah, let's just do... How about we just do number nine? And we'll be done. So eight and nine are the same. Let's do number nine. It looks a little more interesting. Random sample of 300 women, 45% favored stricter gun control legislation. 
in a random sample of 200 men, um, 25% favored stricter gun control legislation. Constructing 98% confidence interval for the difference between the population proportions. So uh, if you look on your notes, so we're talking about two proportions this time, huh? Use either two prop Z test or two prop Z interval. Ours is an interval this time, isn't it? So we're going to go two prop Z interval. Two prop Z interval. <coughs> and then under two prop Z interval, when you go there on your calculator, hit stat and tests and two prop Z interval. That's pretty far down the list, isn't it? B? Is it on B? Yeah, it looks like way down to B. It'll ask you for X1, N1, and X2, N2. Okay, so what do you uh, what do you think X one and N one? So it looks like the women are going to be the uh, population one, and the men will be population two. So what's X one here? Yeah, and how'd you come up with that? Remember that we had two of these on the test we just took. Because they're saying 45% of those women, right? Of 300. Remember, what does of always mean? Multiply. So of, so we're going to take point for, well, you can do it, you probably best to do it first here. Point 0.45 times 300. Was it 135? Yes. 135 women. So that's the actual number of women that favored stricter gun control legislation out of 300. And then for the men, 25% of the 200, so that's 0. 0.25 times 200, which is 50. And so that's 50 men out of 200. Does that make sense? So whenever they give us percentages like that, we have to of multiply and get the actual numbers. So pop those into your calculator. And I'm getting... I'm getting that bottom one. This one? That's you. Did you guys get that okay? What's that? You can just put it right in X1? Yes, you can, but you can't always. So I caution you about that. If it comes out to not be a whole number, remember, remember sometimes they're, they're, we need to round them because it's actual people, and so then it, it'll choke it. I just did it with somebody earlier today, and it went air. So it's best just to do those on the side. If it comes out like 134.99, round to 130. If you just stick it right in the calculator, we'll know what to do.